Hello, I'm Amy Parkinson, and today I'm going to be reading from my historical novel, Sister Seance, which is published by Kern Punkt and a finalist in the 2021 Big Other Book Award in Fiction. Viv used her cameras to start anew after the war. In Concord, people appreciated her skill. A seasoned photographer, she inventoried pristine cotton paper while imagining what she could accomplish with salt, egg white, and sunlight. Viv was grateful glass plate negatives were extremely light sensitive, making exposure time speedy. After arranging chemical baths in a portable dark room, Viv set up her cameras in front of benches upstairs in Miss Turner's boarding house. Awaiting the prize-winning couple from the costume contest, Viv intended her photographs of the couple to be a lasting memento of Concord's 1865 Halloween triumph. What type of costumes would win the prize? Viv wondered. Town Hall was probably bustling with couples parading in disguise before an audience of contest judges and admiring crowds. The boarding house, felt empty with so many people at Town Hall, which hosted the costume contest, followed by public conversations. After the events, small groups would scatter to parlors of private houses, hayrides, and, and dinner parties. The most anticipated dinner party of Halloween was the Dumb Supper, hosted by Miss Ruby Turner inside the boarding house. Several couples from the costume contest would be guests, and Viv would feast among them without speaking. The dumb supper required conversation without words so that the guest must communicate in silence. Silence was supposed to attract the presence of a spirit of a deceased person, a ghost. If rumors were to be believed, an invisible guest would sit at an empty chair at the dinner table. This was done in jest, though spiritualists believed. Spiritualists were growing in number because many families had lost loved ones to sickness and the war. Those in the deepest mourning were trying to reconnect with loved ones they had lost, and spiritualism provided a way. At the Dumb Supper, believers and non-believers would take vows of silence. Downstairs, door hinges screeched like mating owls before rude footsteps thundered up the boarding house's central stairs with dry wood steps weeping in brittle protest. Up here, I'm ready, Viv called to shrill laughing voices in the hallway. The baby leapt inside her. Viv smiled. No one could be allowed to know why. She hadn't confessed her circumstance to her sisters or anyone in Concord. Disguised in elaborate, an elaborately carved bone mask, a couple tiptoed through Viv's room. Shaken by their lack of courteous introduction, Viv stared at the bone mask, framed in long, wild wigs of horse hair. Accented with deep, hollow eye sockets, dark as shadow, the mask exposed real teeth and wide, obscene smiles. The smiling mask presented a special problem, disturbing Viv's plan. No polite person smiled in photographs. It was considered improper. Would you like to remove your mask so I can capture your faces, Viv asked. The man shook his head. His wild wig unfurled to the hardwoods. Well, said Viv, your masks are terrifying because of the way they're grinning. Instead of removing their mask, the couple approached the cameras silently. The man positioned himself and the woman held his hand as they sat together, posing on a bench. Viv took their picture and the couple left without thanking her, removing their mask or saying goodbye. Viv brushed her fingertips across her belly, a protective gesture to reassure her unborn and herself. Alone in the room again, Viv took a deep breath and gazed out the window at autumn leaves falling toward the woods. Making her way past chemical baths and toner, she whispered, it's fine, we're safe, no one knows you're here. Viv, Miss Ruby Turner called from behind the doorway. Viv jumped, trying to disguise her surprise. Is everything all right, dear? Asked Miss Turner, her thick hair falling out of its braid. 
Yes, said Viv. Miss Turner, you only startled me. Sorry, dear. I just wanted to let you know the prize winning couple from the costume contest are downstairs waiting for their portrait. Are you certain? Oh, yes, they've just arrived. The most adorable cat and mouse you've ever seen. Wait until you see their furry ears and tails. Really? If you're sure, said Viv, send them up. I'm ready. Whom had she photographed in the grinning bone mask? Viv shivered, not from cold. Had someone pulled a prank on her, or was it just a misunderstanding? She had no idea and no time to consider. Viv prepared her cameras again. Two teenagers, a pimply boy and a pudgy girl with long golden hair, peeked into the room. The girl was dressed as a cat and the boy was dressed as a mouse. Neither wore a mask. They sat on the bench together, having just announced their engagements. Viv's camera caught the mouse, gazing at the cat with tender eyes. She caught me, the boy said, laughing, before Viv instructed them to sit very still for the camera. She wanted to take more than one photograph to capture the sweetness and light in their gazes because she could tell how they loved each other. Seeing how sweet they were reminded Viv that less than five years ago, she was innocent like them.